All right, we are live. Sean and Zach, man, how are you? Doing awesome, man. How are you? I'm doing really good, man. Um, thanks so much for taking some time to, to jump on the show today. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm, I'm being jo joined by Sean and Zach, the owners of Two Cities Pizza here in uh, downtown Mason. And um, you guys, you know a little bit about uh, about what I'm going to ask today because I, I, I think I, I sent some, uh, <laughs> some material over to Dana. But just those of you who have not joined us to watch the show before, I do this show more of a, of a, um, of a platform, uh, creating a platform for small business owners and business owners alike here in the Mason community, just to be able to come on and share their story. Um, I love, I love the fact that, you know, um, and, and I, I've had an opportunity to watch the our hearts, uh, video and I've included a link to that, um, on this broadcast. So for those of you who have not seen that, you can go over to two cities pizza website to check out the our hearts video. And um, I'm hoping to elaborate a little bit on that today. Um, so this is an opportunity really for you guys to come on and kind of share your story with our Mason community here so that ultimately people can connect and, and hopefully um, join us for a, a beer and a pizza down at Two Cities. Sounds great. So why don't we do this, man? I always start off the show by just trying to learn a little bit more about um, about the business owner. So why don't we start with you, Zach? Um, tell us a little bit about you and your background, and then and then Sean, we can talk about you and then how you guys met, and then go from there. Yeah, absolutely. That all kind of uh, comes together too. So it, it's a good segue. But um, to talk about myself as it relates to uh, business and to cities, you almost have to talk about. Uh, my relationship with Sean going back all the way to elementary school uh, where we that's where we became friends um, and uh, we have a, a lot of great memories growing up together having this, a lot of the same interests and ultimately what we found was going through uh, middle school high school that's when things started to develop uh, when you start to wonder what am I going to do uh, in college what am I going to do in life um, and so for me, I was starting to develop a lot of interest in uh, design and marketing and advertising. So then more than anything, the, the drive was entre being an entrepreneur was, was sure. really something I was interested in. Uh, and Sean really shared that with me. So we were able to, um, it, it's really funny thinking back to, to those days, how many ideas we would try to come up with, you know, Maybe we didn't have a normal high school experience, but what we thought was fun was getting together and just crafting business strategies and ideas and what, hey, let's make a business here and do that. And, uh, just a lot of fun stuff like that. So um, that, that's uh, how it all kind of began as far as uh, how we knew we would jive together uh, well in business. Um, and then we ended up going to separate colleges. I went to a school in, um, in Cleveland, Tennessee called Lee University, uh, where I really was able to dive into uh, the creative side of design and marketing and advertising, um, learning what what it means to put things together aesthetically. Uh, and I, that's where I found my niche. I really liked that a lot, um, and it seemed to work really well. And I guess that's probably a really good time to kind of tag Sean in on on what he and and I were able to collaborate with. Yeah, well, I mean, going back to to high school for for me, I think a really important facet of the genesis of our story is the influences that we had growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in both of our families, they're very entrepreneurial families. His grandfather's an inventor and founded his own company. And we actually both spent time working in that company for his grandfather. Um, a lot of folks on my side of the family are entrepreneurial. So small business was always a goal of ours it was something we aspired to because of the role models that were in our lives. So that was huge for me in, in in terms of be a small business owner, and then issues, and I think that's helped. You guys still there?
Well, we are experiencing technical difficulties. So hopefully they'll be right back and uh, we can reconnect them. Here they go. Ah, the internet and technology. Don't we love it? Yeah, there we go, man. All right. So I've got I've got you back, man. I I've got you back. So uh, Where you yeah, left off. yeah, I just lost you for uh, for just a bit there. So Sean, I I why don't you start over and kind of talk about like, um, just talk I guess talk more about like. I, I know the inspiration, or, or I know the I, I know the story behind you know Zach and and and, and him talking about his story through uh, where he went to college and everything. What just follow up with that because I kind of lost you after Zach quit. Yeah. It was just kind of choppy, so go ahead. Sure. Um, what what I had sort of talked a little bit about was, was how entrepreneurial, but all business made a lot of sense. So after we graduated high school, we had a goal that we wanted to work together. I actually moved to New York. New York. And passion for uh, uh, New York. But we love both hometown guys from, from Cincinnati, born and raised here. And sure. We also share a love for um, the culinary and the creative arts that come out of New York and Chicago. And so it's great for, for us to build a bridge between those cities here in, in our hometown. We, we really love hearing that. So that, that's an interesting concept because – so you, are, you guys are both obviously um, born to be entrepreneurs, right? So how did you – put? How did, let's, how did you bridge the gap between entrepreneurship and then um, and, and and pizza? Like, I mean, obviously, there's so many different businesses you can go into, right? I mean, there's and you guys, you talked about being even being back in high school and strategizing about different business ideas and so forth. How did you put it together that it would be pizza? Well, there are a couple of really important pieces to that. I think at core, we're both uh, people persons. We love to be around people, and if you think about it, restaurants, you're around your team all day long, and you're around customers all day long. So you won't succeed in restaurants unless you're a people person. That's a really important piece Good of the point. puzzle. Yeah. Um, and then secondly, I think a, a huge part of it is a fundamental need that you know food, food fills. Um, and we love the, the culinary aspect, the creativity that you can have with food. Um, so really those two things – we're driving for me is the, is the people factor and then the way that people come around food um, just seemed like a really kind of um, a, a warm way to do business. So let me let me let me unpack that a little bit um, or let me ask you to unpack that a little bit when you talk about because you're right. I mean, the, the success rate in restaurants is, <clears throat> is is very, very low. So you talked about that missing component being relationships and people. Right. So talk about how two cities how do you how do you take that 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 relationship and people component and and make it so that you're having so much success? We we talk about hospitality. Um, again, role models in our lives helped in, you know teach that to us. Um, there's a restaurateur in in New York City. His name is Danny Myers, and he's written a number of books about hospitality. But at core, it's it's the factor of people, and we've tried to focus hospitality not as much on the customer as we do on our staff, because mm -hmm. we think that if our staff feels like they're cared for and this is home and it's a safe place, they're gonna serve our guests so much better than if they don't like their job and they don't like their boss and they don't believe in the mission of the company. So for us, we care so much about hospitality internally. That's been a huge key to success. I think that's been one of, our, one of the keys to success. If I could add on to that, um, mm -hmm. one of the, I guess, quintessential memories that we have as far as interviewing, um, there's been great interviews and then there's been interviews that have ended fairly quickly because we have, we've realized that uh, there are certain people that understand what we're getting at as far as culture. I mean, we always preach culture here um, because like Sean said, if you don't have a good culture uh, with your team, that's one of the first things that that you notice as a, as a customer, as a guest at a restaurant. 
uh, you know that you know that the team is driving well and they're on each other's team when you go into a restaurant and things are smooth and you can tell that people like each other and it's it's genuine uh, versus the opposite where uh, servers arguing with another server or you can hear uh, arguments uh, from the front and back of house. These are normal things in restaurants that we knew going into it. Um, it was a, a, a big, tall order to say, we're going to be different than other restaurants. Um, but we felt like it was a, a noble one. And so one of our Are we still there? Yep. Yep. Great. And so I so you cut out when you said so went so one of our so one of our and then where were you going with that? Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure if this is where where it cut out, but uh, one of our interview uh, we actually was to him. He said that putting on a show for 45 minutes to an hour with that table um, is what hospitality is. You know, putting on a show for him and. Being and being an actor basically is what he was saying. And that interview to us was just everything wrong about how people perceive hospitality. Uh, it's, it's just not, not authentic. That at all. Yeah, not yeah. authentic. Exactly. And so what we do here is, I mean, we define hospitality, um, like Sean said, with our team first, because we know that if we're practicing it daily with each other, uh, you know, the 40, 40, 50 hours a week that we're all working together matters a lot more than a 45 minute encounter because we know that the 50, 40 hours inform the 45 minutes. It's who we really are as a team. And I think that ethos has helped make two cities a community restaurant. You know, our goal was always to be a community restaurant, a crossroads in the community where customers come in and, you know, their server is somebody that they taught in high school and their track coach is over at the next table and their city council member, member is at the next table. And it's like a who's who in here on Friday night of Mason community members. And that is my favorite thing. We didn't want to be a chain restaurant. We, uh, if anything, we wanted to be a place that the community could gather, especially because there wasn't much life in downtown when we moved into downtown. And we've seen a huge spike in you know activity and um, in people's hopefulness for more businesses coming into downtown. Um, because people have a lot of Mason pride, and they should, because Mason is an incredible community, and we're just excited to kind of be able to host fun nights for the community on those like Friday and Saturday nights. Um, yeah, that's my favorite thing. It's awesome, and it, the funny thing is, I was just I was literally just talking to um, uh, the people over at uh, the Common Brew. Um, well, Amy yeah. specifically was was talking about how um, they really wanted to be a community restaurant, and I, I got to tell you guys. I, I, you would never, I would never in, 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 you know, all good things to chain restaurants. I mean, I get it. Right. Uh, it, it is they're They're serving a purpose. Right. But it's just a different feel when you have a community restaurant or a community brew pub or a community, anything. Right. It's a way for people to really to connect with Mason. Right. Or any or whatever community that that business is in. And so I, I'm curious, how did you guys choose Mason as that community? Now it's the me show. So we're just dealing with some bad internet connections today. I guess that's just part of the deal, man. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Dude, we will survive this, man. I'm not yeah, worried, brother. So what, what what I was saying is, um, you know, I was, I was really talking about um, just, just you being a community restaurant um, and, but more specifically, how did you guys choose Mason to be that community restaurant? It was a number of, uh, really a number of factors uh, for us. We were looking in, in a lot of different areas and for us, Mason uh, really fit exactly where we wanted to start uh, as a company. And one of the huge parts uh, about it was the building. When we found the, the Mason City Hall building, uh, the former historic City Hall building, 
Um, that was one of the major driving forces. Uh, Mason's a great community. We love the school systems. We love the, uh, the neighborhoods. Um, everyone we run into in Mason was an affirmation, but really what, what better place in our mind to start uh, than, than a city hall building for two cities as a concept and a city hall building for the fact that everyone is naturally drawn to this place. We'll have customers come in uh, that have lived in Mason their whole lives and they have so many memories here in this building. It's so cool to repurpose something and give it life again. Uh, especially in that community sense. Yeah, that's a great answer, man. Anything anything you want to add to that? I couldn't add anything to that. That was, that was an awesome answer. <laughs> that was a great answer. <laughs> this guy, incredible. And, you know, that that's exactly what you want to hear, too. It's like, um, because I, I just think you guys, you probably, I, I hope you understand, um, but you may not re realize the ramifications of, of, of the impact that you're actually having here in the community. So I want to be, the, you know, one of the first ones, hopefully, to communicate that to you. I, um, I'm just excited for what the future holds, um, not only for you guys, but for downtown Mason in general. So I'm curious, man. I'm a I'm a firehouse pizza guy. I love the buffalo chicken, um, yeah. and I love the I, I love the bootleg bread. Um, what what do you guys like? <laughs> Honestly, for me, uh, it depends on the day. I uh, will have different cravings, but I, honest to goodness, have not gotten tired of the food that we make. Um, you know, in, in not only the two and a quarter years being open, but in the years of development previous. Um, I think we've we've settled on some really special recipes, um, and having the duality of New York style thin crust and Chicago deep dish mm -hmm. surprisingly gives you a lot of flexibility in what you're eating. Um, there's so many different combinations that pizza as a food is such an incredible canvas because you start out with the dough and then you can just build any sort of flavor combination. You know, we have um, an Indian pizza with sog paneer and curry. We have the firehouse with the buffalo chicken. There's barbecue. Um, and then you have your classic margarita, that Italian flavor. There's just a lot of different ways to express uh, culinary flavors through pizza. Uh, yeah. So, so, so talk, talk about, let's talk specifically about the menu and, and where you got the inspiration. Um, you know, obviously New York and Chicago um, played a big role in the inspiration for, for your, your crust, right? Um, but talk about the toppings. Where did you get the inspiration for most of these pizzas? Well, you know, a couple of the different pizzas have a specific origin, and it's, and it's great to be able to talk about it because the menu is such a limited place to talk about it. Uh, but, like, for example, one of our New York pizzas is called the Urban Artichoke. Um, and it turns out that there's a great chain of pizzerias in New York City called Artichokes, and their premium pizza is this wonderful cream sauce artichoke pizza that's just, like, loved by all these New Yorkers. And when I was there living there, I loved that pizza. And so we wanted to do a tribute pizza and we called it the Urban Artichoke. Um, so that's one example of it being like a specific um, kind of honor to a certain place. But mm -hmm. like our Chicago deep dish, we sampled as many deep dish places as we could. And we decided that we liked Lou Malnati's deep dish pizza the best. Mm -hmm. But specifically at Lou Malnati's, they have a, one of their crusts is a butter crust. And it's like this flaky, incredible pie slash pastry dough. It's not as dry and thick as a lot of other deep dish. So that's the crust that we set out to emulate. And I, and I think we accomplished that over quite a long period of, of time. But, you know, we're not shy in saying our, our inspiration for that Chicago deep dish crust is from Lou Malnati's because they're such mm -hmm. a wonderful Chicago household name. They're a great company. And we actually got to sit down and have lunch with Mark Malnati, who's their CEO. He gave us pointers before we even open our restaurant in Cincinnati. Um, so that, Dude, that, I'm getting hungry just talking about it, man. I'm getting <laughs> hungry just talking about it. So actually, what I'm hearing you say, it sounds like you you guys actually went, you, you traveled to specific locations in each one of these cities to get inspiration for each one of these dishes. Is that correct? Well, it, it's true. And specifically on the point of toppings, this is another thing I wish we could communicate to all of our customers. But the reason our flavor is, is different, and I would argue better, from other pizzerias is that we get some of our toppings and ingredients from New York City, and we get some of our toppings and ingredients from Chicago. So specifically, the cheese for our deep dish, the tomatoes we use, the sausage, uh, you know, the neon relish for our Chicago hot dog, the bun, all of that actually comes from Chicago. 
it's from the same distributor that all these deep dish guys are using. And so when we get Chicagoans in here all the time that are like, I was really skeptical, but this is just as good as, if not better than deep dish I've had in Chicago. And that's so great to hear because we've gone to the lengths of, you know, the distributor we use in Chicago, they didn't actually distribute to Cincinnati. We had to set up an agreement with another distributor for them to get their products. That's how important being genuine was to us. We were really scared, maybe not scared, but we were we had a close attention to detail when opening because we didn't want to just claim to be Chicago deep dish and not actually be genuine. Um, because that's something that would be easy to do if we weren't genuine. Yeah. You could just say, yeah, you're not the real deal. But one of our distributors, they're from the Bronx in New York City, and the other one, they're from the south side of Chicago. So there's nothing not genuine about our product, and we're really proud to be able to say that. It did take a lot of legwork, but ultimately it was worth it. Yeah, yeah. So talk 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 about that period when you decided to, uh, and this is backing up just a little bit, but I, I do want to find out a little bit more about, you know, how you went from idea, right? So you, you decided that you, that you were going to do, that you were all in with the, with the Two Cities Pizza idea, right? You, and then you found the building, you found City Hall, and then, um, and then making that happen. I'm curious, like, Talk about the logistics of because that's not something that's easy to do. I mean, let, let's let's face it. Um, you, you there are a lot of hoops to jump through to make all that stuff happen. So t- talk about the challenges of, of doing that and, um, and 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 kind of elaborate on that a little bit to our audience. Uh, well, honestly, it was uh, I think collaboration is one of the best words we can use when talking about that season. Um, we've had so much collaboration with. Uh, so many different people and and really for, for the purpose of creating something that's different and, and unique and worthwhile uh, we knew that going a going into pizza it, it's almost a death sentence if you're not going to choose to be different or, or better if you're just trying to throw together a pizza place you're one in a million and it's right. hard I mean it really is and we knew that we weren't arrogant uh, enough to just assume that we could go in and, and change the pizza world without really trying uh, to incorporate a lot of different ideas and and new fresh things that aren't being done. And so in doing so, you know, we were, we were all just really focused on what is the concept. Uh, And that word kept coming around concept because uh, a lot of places nowadays are are experiencing trouble in the restaurant world that are non-concept restaurants. Uh, And that used to be okay. And, but just like everything else, um, the competition is getting stronger. Um, Technology is improving across the board. Um, and people, the consumer uh, in, in every area is expecting more out of, out of the producer. And so for us, that concept was a really important thing. We, we are inspired by those restaurants that have done really well. Um, and so for us, that concept restaurant theme uh, kind of took us down a path of, of experiencing different styles of pizza um, and, and saying, what is something that people are, are not getting? And one thing that kept coming up time and time again is just the quintessential New York style pizza and the quintessential Chicago style pizza under one roof. It was it was almost like a light bulb moment when we couldn't decide between which route do we want to go down. Uh, why not both was one of those questions that we had to answer. Yeah. Um, and for us, that just opened up a ton of doors. And so thinking back to, you know, the origin, working full time, uh, doing three different jobs each and uh, full time students as freshmen in college and also then trying to craft a a business plan, a business strategy and say, if for let's forecast four years from now when we graduate, uh, what's it going to look like? And just um, we're just so thankful for the people that were put in our paths and we feel really blessed that a lot of people were able to um, help us through that process and use our, our networks both in New York and in Tennessee with incredible professor, business professors and design professors really were able to come alongside us and say, hey, this is something you're passionate about. We see this, this is a good idea. Um, so, yeah, I mean, collaboration was was the key for us. You guys are you, you're definitely wise beyond, beyond your years. And I think that, you know, where where most business where, where most restaurants get in trouble is just getting together with the idea of of being um, 
being a tactician and not and not a, not a, an actual business owner. You know what I mean? There, there's a there's a difference in just making great pizza and a difference in selling great pizza. You know what I mean? Um, because you know there are plenty of people out in the world that can make great pizza, but there are not there are not a lot of people that can turn it into a successful business. And and you both have done that. And so you know for that, um, the people at Mason and myself are. Are, are exceptionally grateful. And, and I, I'm, I'm curious, like every time I've been in, I've had a great experience. And so my, my question to you guys would be, how do you, how are you able to, you, you said, you, one thing that resonated with me is you said that, you know, you're, you're getting buy-in from the people that you're bringing in on your team, right? They, they're sharing the, the vision, they're sharing the core values, but how are you communicating that in a way that, each one of those people, when they touch a consumer, that they're able to give the exact same great experience? That's an awesome question. And it's one that we thought a lot about before we even opened, before we hired our first person here at Two Cities. We wanted to communicate vision. Uh, we read a lot of books, you know, business books about, you know, why and having a mission statement or a vision statement. We wanted to create something that was true, that wasn't just catchy. And what it boiled down to is we felt like a lot of restaurants, when they tried to control culture, they tried to make people robotic. Like everybody says the same script and, and you don't feel like they're genuine. Mm -hmm. So what we wanted to do with our staff was to make sure we hired people with personality and let them work with their personality. Like that would be a recipe for success. So really the formula has been be very, very selective in hiring hire great, enthusiastic people just because they are that way anyway in their daily life, like they're an enthusiastic, joyful person, <laughs> and then get them into the culture. And the way we talk about it when we onboard people is we talk about having soul. You know, have your own personality, have soul. And soul is an acronym that, that we came up with before we opened that is an acronym, you know, for these four principles, selflessness, optimism, unity, and loyalty. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Love it. you know, that has been huge for our team. It's been great when we're successful, we can point to those principles. When we fall short, we can point to those principles. So, but even just the acronym of having soul speaks to, we don't want to control people who work here. We want to kind of unleash their potential in, you know, we want our servers to even view it like they have a business inside a business where they're cultivating a clientele and they're knowing people's names. And what I love about our bar team they know people's drinks when, when they walk through the door, not, you know, before they order. And that's just not something that you teach. That's who they are. And then you kind of take away being corporate. We like to be uncorporate, you know, where yeah. we, we have rules that we play by, but people really feel freedom to be themselves and work hard and they're rewarded for it. That's gone. That's, that's really helped us a lot. And that all goes back to selecting the right people, right? That's where you win. You win in selecting the right people because you don't ever have the problems. If you select the wrong people, that's when you create the problems. Not only in not only in communicating your message, but also the culture. Correct? Absolutely. For sure. And in, in small business, this is just something we we talk about often. But we had a lot of difficulties. Like there were a lot of hard things about opening and starting a business. Um, you know, creating the concept, what's the idea, what's the logo, what's the, the interior design of the building, and then our product. What are the recipes? And uh, making sure that we have a really safe, hygienic environment that's sanitary, that we take care of the public. We really care about that. Once you figure those things out, for the most part, those decisions are made, and it's, mm -hmm. and it's easier going. The one variable that's very difficult about small business is your team. Because there is always change, and it's not a static thing. Our recipe for our pizza is static. We're not changing it. We love it. <laughs> but yeah. every day when we open, we have – it's like a, a play that opens each night. There's the, there's the potential to make a mistake. And so we try to treat every night like opening night. But that's a lot of responsibility and a lot of pressure to keep the staff where you need it. So my advice to any new entrepreneurs or people who want to become entrepreneurs is – one, go for it. And two, think a lot about your people when you have the ability to hire a team. That's, it's huge. Like, don't overlook that because it's actually the most important facet of our business, easily. 
Absolutely, man. I, I, well, you guys, like I said, you are you're, both of you wise beyond your years and, and so thankful that you did come into the Mason area. What's something that I didn't ask you that I probably should have? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't know if anything that, uh, that you should have asked, but, uh, you know, one thing um, while Sean was talking, it just it made me think of was uh, the question that we always ask uh, every everyone in our interviews uh, that we can. And, and that's, what are you passionate about? Because at the end of the day, uh, we understand that for most people here, now we have, we have full timers and we have career people, um, but this is a, a high volume restaurant. And just like any high volume restaurant, you have tons of part timers. And, and we love that because uh, it expands our, our two cities family. Um, but those part timers, realistically, we have to understand that this is, this is a part-time job, and then they're going to move on, and they're going to do something else in one year, two years, three, four, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so the question that we like to always ask everyone, including specifically our part-time, which is what are you passionate about? Um, and what we get back from them kind of tells us the story that, that we need to hear if they're going to fit into the culture. So at the end of the day, if someone is not passionate um, about something in their lives. It really doesn't matter to us what they're passionate about. What we want to hear them say is, this is what I'm passionate about, and this is how it affects my life. These are the life steps that I'm taking to position myself better in this area, or these are the things that I can do to make myself better in this area because I care about it. It doesn't matter what it is. We just, we're just looking for that passion because at yeah. the end of the day, uh, that's what we preach here is passion for what you do. Because there are two theories that we really buy into, and it's, it's the positive side and the negative side, where a culture can very easily spiral downward or climb upward, just depending on how people feel about uh, what they're passionate about. Yeah, and you know that 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 goes to your point of you know making sure that you're plugging in the right people, right? You 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 want people that um, obviously. Uh, are like-minded, uh, passionate about some of the same things, or at least feel like you're putting them into an environment where they're going to get support um, about what they're passionate about. What's great about you guys, man, is that you know you you figured out the foundation, right? Like you've built you built your business on a very strong foundation because you understand those foundational principles, and what's come out of that is good culture and just great food, man. You know what I mean? And and so I'm curious, man, what is what is the future look like for you guys? Obviously, you're, you're two really young guys, two really successful entrepreneurs. What's the future look like? Well, you know, we really love where we're at. We this season has been an incredibly tough, but we've also we've learned a lot and we've, we've grown with our team. We have more people now on the team that want to help us grow. Uh, two cities because they really believe in it and they they love the building blocks like you said for the foundation and they see a lot of potential in it so first and foremost we're going to just keep the pedal to the metal here in mason because we really do care about this community and we want to keep food quality high we want to keep improving the restaurant um, and keeping the service high um, but then we you know we're, we don't have a specific plan but we are absolutely you know looking for a second location um not actively right now, but we um, we want to grow, and I think everybody kind of has that impulse to grow. But like everything else, there's a balance. Um, there's a very fine line that you have to walk. Where if you just have this uh, all-encompassing vision to grow, that's what actually kills a lot of businesses. Yeah. Is they they yeah. outstrip their means. They grow too quickly. They lose their culture, and then they uh, kind of collapse from within. So. Yeah. We do want to take it slow and we want to be, um, we just want to think through everything that we, that we do um, and, uh, you know, kind of keep getting the word out there about two cities because we love it. We're really passionate about it. We feel like it's a special place and it is our favorite thing on a Friday, Saturday night to meet new people who come in through the door and they say they've never been here. I'm genuinely excited for them, you know, to experience it because it is a concept restaurant. It's not just a meal. It's an experience. And I hope you felt that way when you've come here. I mean, yeah, most uh, definitely. It's it's just been fun to be here um, and, and to, to greet people. So we, we love that. We don't want to lose that that part of it either. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, Sean, Zach, hey man, thank you so much. Uh, it's truly been a pleasure to, to get to know you guys a little bit better and hear your story. And uh, I have no doubt, no matter what you do, you'll be successful. And um, we're, we're so glad to have you here in Mason and, um, you know, keep, keep rocking it, man. Um, just, just a big fan of your guys. And, and if I can ever do anything, certainly let me know. But uh, next time I'm in, hopefully we can uh, have a beer and, and say hi. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having us on. Thanks, Mike. All right, brother. It's good seeing you guys, man. You too. Take care. All right. Good luck. Thanks.